Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, April 9th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Let's start with a couple of patches uh, today. First, Trend Micro released a critical patch, as they're calling it, for Apex One Office Scan and their very free consoles. This particular vulnerability that's being addressed by this patch is a directory traversal vulnerability that would allow an attacker to modify arbitrary files. Now, Trend Micro states in its advisory that in order to exploit this vulnerability, an attacker does already have to have access to the machine. So it's really more approach escalation of vulnerability, but they still highly recommend that you do apply these patches. The second vulnerability is also a approach escalation vulnerability, this time in the Dovecot uh, mail server. You typically use that for IMAP. Now, in order to exploit this vulnerability, an attacker has to be able to modify the Dovecot index files. Once the attacker modified index file, they then have to start the indexer worker or run dove admin index, and that will cause dovecut to crash, but can also be used to obtain root privileges. Exploiting this vulnerability should be pretty difficult because recent versions of Dovecot have been compiled with a number of mitigations against buffer overflows like global offset tables are now read-only. Also, ASLR is being used and the binary has been compiled with stack smash protection. So all in all, given the access that an attacker would already need in order to exploit a system and the countermeasures implemented in recent versions of Dovecot, I would not consider this a big priority as far as patching goes. And talking about some older vulnerabilities, a couple of weeks ago, we had this approach escalation vulnerability in Apache CVE 2019-02-11. This vulnerability requires that an attacker is able to upload code that's then being executed by Apache. And well, it gives the attacker full access to the system. We do have an exploit now for this vulnerability. Comes in the form of a PHP script. PHP, of course, is code that's being executed. So this is one way how uh, this particular vulnerability could be exploited. It does come with a lot of uh, comments. So shouldn't be all that difficult to port this uh, to other languages. As I said, when the patch was released for this vulnerability, that the type of server that's most at risk here are shared server where you have uh, multiple users that don't trust each other necessarily executing code on the same web server. Now, one exploit scenario that always comes up is the typical phishing email that doesn't ask you for a username and password, but instead just asks you to click on a link and then a malicious web page is magically exploiting your browser in order to gain access to your system. Now, uh, these sort of one-click exploits uh, that trigger some kind of buffer overflow in the browser are actually uh, quite rare. What's much more common and simpler is to actually use JavaScript in the browser to then use the browser sort of as a relay, as a proxy to attack the internal infrastructure. And there is now a real neat talk that was posted on YouTube from B-Sides San Francisco that uh, goes over some of the methods that an attacker can use in order to exploit your browser. One of the individuals presenting here is actually a contributor to the Beef project. If you're not familiar with Beef, the browser exploitation framework, which makes a lot of these type of attacks actually amazingly easy to perform. So in particular to the red teamers here, I highly recommend uh, to take a look at the talk and also find that uh, tools like Beef and such uh, always uh, make great demos in order to illustrate the dangers of actually clicking on links uh, that you may receive in email. 
And then in Diaries today, we have the second installment by Jim about Hydra, this uh, new reverse analysis uh, tools. In particular, he's again comparing it to IDA, which uh, is uh, one of the probably most commonly used tools uh, on the commercial end that sort of competes uh, with Hydra. In this uh, latest uh, install, he's talking about how to find sort of unreachable code and how to work uh, the the compiler in Hydra. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.